I'm at the Centerburg Farming Festival today in Centerburg, Ohio. And I'm taking a look at this guy's Ford kitchen sink engine. So this is something that he made trying to duplicate some of the pictures of the original engine made by Henry Ford. Let's see it run. All right, here we go. This is the gas tank, which is a converted uh, oiler that's been uh, revamped inside with, uh, with a different sized hole to accommodate a drip of gasoline instead of a drip of oil. We adjust it for a certain amount of uh, fuel to, to drip into the uh, carburetor, if you will, which by the way, everything is made out of uh, uh, plumbing parts elbows, a uh, Model T coil, the drip is very critical of, of how it runs. get her here. You have to get that oil drip just, just right for it to, to, to run properly. So the ignition trigger is down here. Just a basic piece of brass that I bent into a configuration that needed to be for the for the uh, roll pin to, to touch that. It's like a set of points, if you will. Yeah. With the end of it doubled for double thickness, and then a brass sleeve pressed over the roll pins so it's brass to brass contact. You made all these pieces? Uh, the brass pieces I did, I had the, uh, the parts that had to be machined, I had a machinist do that for me. Uh, I don't have a machine shop, so everything I could do without a machine shop, I did, but then he, he machined some of the parts for me. But it's basically a, a, a T, an elbow for plumbing, and, and uh, the uh, exhaust valve is constructed out of plumbing parts, an elbow. There's a piece of screen in the bottom of this elbow that will atomize the fuel at the right, uh, at the right proportion. It has problems on a windy day because that disturbs your fuel drip. Yes, there. it does. We'll move this up a little bit and see if we can. Actually, the drip is, is really close to every time it hits. Drip, 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 drip is how I set it. But the wind today is uh, disturbing the, the uh, drip of the fuel. When that gets disturbed, it, it, it uh, changes how the, the uh, engine so runs. That swing valve check valve has been modified, right? Yes. Yes. So what's, what's soldered in there? Oh, I can show you probably better than I can tell you. These are the parts the way they are when they get machined and when they start. This was the this was the piston. This is just a big basic tube. That's all this is. And then the, the piston is machined with the, the grooves and everything, so it looks like this. The rings are actually out of an automatic transmission, out of a car. The right size. We tried Teflon rings in this, and it didn't work. So we had to go back to the metal rings. With that. But this is the uh, this is the exhaust valve. This is what this is what's inside the exhaust part. With the spring, oh, the spring on top, the spring right here. Right. right. And I don't know if we have a picture of the interior. The intake valve. Yeah, the intake. I'm not sure if it wasn't back through there. I, I took these off the internet. It would be that direction if it's there. This, of course, is the combustion chamber. And actually, the combustion chamber 
the combustion chamber is too large, this way where the plug is, this has to be partially filled with lead to make the combustion rate. Yes. yes. Right. Compression ratio. Yeah. The uh, counterweight. There must not be a picture inside no. of that. So I can't tell you exactly, the guy that machined that for me, I can't tell you exactly what's inside that. Now this is the drawing. These are the drawings that, that were up at the museum. Okay. That there's a gentleman in Tennessee that got all the drawings. They, the museum let him have the drawings, and then he he made a DVD and all that. You can actually buy all the prints and everything to build it from him. I'm going to shut it down because there's no cooling system on it, so it gets hot uh -huh. really quick. All right, very nice. But the actual, this is what it looked like. This is what Ford's engine actually looked like. That's a picture of the one that's up at the museum. He actually used 110 volt for the spark because of, in 1893, you have to realize there was no spark plugs in this country. No engines, no cars, no nothing. And Ford was trying to understand how an internal combustion engine ran. So he worked for Edison at the Detroit Illuminating Company in 1893 and him and some of his co-workers put this together he brought it home that's what it looked like he hooked it up to the to the uh, electric light and all he did was put a wire through the combustion chamber and then welded a wire to the top of the piston so when the two made contact the 110 gave him his spark in the combustion chamber up to the crude basic igniter yes and then this picture is, is a, a painting that was done by Irvin Bacon in 1938 that Ford actually described to Irving what him and his wife did that day when he brought it home and attached it to her kitchen sink and hooked it to the light bulb. He ran it ground to the water pipes. <laughs> she stood at the, at, the, at the rear of the engine and dripped oil or gas into the, into the uh, uh, cup. He had a gas cup on it. Yeah, it looked like a primer yep. cup of some sort. And he had the, the electric line hooked to the engine, and they got it to come to life doing that. So that would have been the first time that Henry ever heard an internal combustion engine run. They put it all to good use, you know, the information. And by 1896, this was 1893, and by 1896, the quadricycle was in existence, which would be the twin salt. Yeah, it's in the back of yeah. the and that's what he had three years later after this engine right. was, was uh, experimented with. And then the rest is history from that point. So these are just replicas. It's to, it's to scale. But it's, it's a total replica. The real one still exists in Dearborn. Uh, actually, this picture, which is not very good, was Edsel. And Henry actually uh, doing some experiments with the engine while it was up at the museum. But they're very critical to get to run properly. There's a lot of adjustments and things that have to be done to them. Be, you have to consider being made out of a bunch of plumbing parts. It's not very, it's not very precise. So there's a lot of uh, detailed things that have to be done. And trust me, the wind does not help any of that today. So. The oiler is the oiler is one critical part of it. This has to have the glass taken out for your air intake. The uh, the original hole has to be soldered shut, and I used a twenty thousandths drill to get the uh, drip for gasoline instead of oil. Oh, you close the oil hole up. Yes, the oil the oil hole was completely closed shut and a 20,000 drill used to re-drill that, and that gives me uh, uh, the right consistency for, for gas instead of oil. Okay. And then have an awful big drop come through there otherwise. Yes, and then when you take this off, there's a, in this elbow, there's a real fine mesh screen, really super fine, and it's double thickness, and when the drip, when the drip goes clear down to the bottom of the elbow and hits that screen, it atomizes the fuel for the uh, intake. And of course, we've, we've altered, put a spark plug in it instead of 110. And what you end up with
that's the working end of it. A six volt battery and a Model T Ford coil. To make it all come together. Wonderful. Thank and you. That's about it. Yep. That's pretty Thank nice. You. It's all, right. all barn siding, uh, uh, some kind of barn wood that I bought in an antique shop in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I wanted it to, to kind of look like the way that Henry built it. He used a real rough looking piece of wood to, uh, to build the engine on the original engine. So I tried to copy that to the best of my ability to make it look kind of crude. So it's done that way on purpose. There are some of them that you'll find out there that are done on mahogany. They look really, really nice, but I really wanted to make this one look closer to what Henry did as opposed to making it so pretty. Yeah. And this is a hand wheel from some sort of water valve? That was a water valve wheel that I bought in Berlin, Ohio at an antique shop. You can see it has the close and open on it for a, a, water, a water valve. And uh, it has to be a specific weight and a specific diameter. Uh, specified in the in the blueprints for it to work, it has to be at least it has to be at least uh, 13 inches in diameter, and it has to weigh at least uh, nine and a half pounds, for it to give you the momentum to keep the engine running, along with the counterweight. Yeah. This is the cam shaft that operates the valve. Yeah, the, the cam the cam is attached to the uh, to this gear when it comes around and pushes the cam rod, pushes this rod forward, which opens up the exhaust valve here. And then when the brass sleeve comes around to the, to the, to the brass strap, when this switch is on, it gives you your spark to the spark plug over here, which is all configured through the wiring underneath. The oiling system is just a hole that was drilled into this tube, and this was JB welded to the top with a real small, like a, only a 20 thousandths hole drilled through the cylinder. And then there's a piece of felt inside here with two uh, split washers or lock washers that holds that felt down. Fill this with oil and it allows a certain amount of oil to drip into the cylinder as it's needed. If you just have a hole there, too much oil goes through it once. So you want to restrict some of that. So the split washers keep that felt held down there because they'll blow that. It'll blow the felt back up out. You don't have something holding it down in there. All right, that looks pretty nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Anytime. You take this to other tractor shows and things? Yeah, we've had it to only one other show this year in Charm, Ohio, and. Uh, we was under the big tent in Charm with uh, several other model collectors, and uh, it was run by the Amish in Berlin or in, in Charm. And uh, they came around and, and gave it best a show Great. at that the Charm show. So it's uh, it's had a lot of attention, and it gets a lot. It's a, it's a fun piece to have. It's uh, kind of unusual. All right. Okay. Thank you. Well, appreciate it. Anytime.